Good afternoon. This week's word of the week is going to be classification. I got it written right here, and then I wrote electrode above it because we're talking about electrode classifications. And then on these word of the weeks, these welding terms, I'm going to start doing a scale of uh, 1 to 10 uh, every week. 10 being the worst, if you didn't know it. Um, with classification, if you don't know what the classification is, it's about a 4. Because the fact is that a lot of people know the classification, they just don't know what's called a classification. A welder, for instance, most welders have welded with 7018. 7018 is the classification of the electro. They just don't know it's called the classification. Now that being said, if you're a welding engineer or a welding inspector and you don't know what the classification is, that four goes right up to a 10. Uh, those types of people need to know what the classification is. Uh, if a welder doesn't know what 7018 is, that four goes up to a 10 too. The fact that they don't know what's called the classification is what I'm saying isn't uh, completely unfortunate. Uh, most people know they're using 718, they just don't, don't link it with the 718 being called the classification of the uh, electrode here. So what we're going to do here, kind of go over what the classification covers, uh, then we're going to look at some typical classifications on some steel wires and, and uh, electrodes, then we'll go out in the lab and we'll actually look at the boxes and show you where the classifications are. So let's start by, uh, what does the classification tell you? AWS dictates this, the American Welding Society. So they've put out the uh, classifications. It's going to be a minimal tensile strength. Tensile strength means you're going to take something, rip it apart, right? And in pounds per square inch, it's going to measure how much it took to rip something apart. So typically with like 7018, it's going to be 70,000 pounds per square inch. Minimal tensile strength. That's what that electrode must meet for requirements. Uh, position. So what position do you weld in? Flat, horizontal, vertical, or overhead. And then uh, your flux. So what type of flux it is. If, you're, if you have flux that's MIG, it's obviously not going to have a flux. And then your types of currents that can be used with that electrode. Now I had a person last week, and they were an engineer, and they, they gave me the specification instead of the classification. Now typically, on a welding procedure, you're going to have your classification, then you're going to have your specification list. That's why it's so easy to confuse the two. It's not a huge deal if you mix the two up, as long as you have both of them, right? But you don't want it to be put out as a final copy with the specification where the classification is. So the big rule of thumb here with classifications versus specifications is this right here, E versus A. Okay, E is going to start all your classifications out. It's going to say E7018 or ER70-6, depending on uh, what you're using here. Your specifications are all going to have an A in front of them. It's going to say A5.1 or A5.18. That's the specification, all right? So when you're filling out uh, a welding procedure, uh, just remember, your classifications always start with an E. That's why I have the E in this circle not crossed out and the A crossed out. That's a specification. The engineer that came up to me last week gave me an A number. That told me instantly that he was talking about the specification. I mean, I knew what he was talking about, but, you know, if you're talking classification, remember, it's going to be an E. So some typical classifications or some common ones, I guess you could say. Uh, we already talked about E7018. Now this means electrode 70,000 pounds of minimal tensile strength. One means the position, and that means all positions if it's number one. And then eight is going to be your flux and your electrical characteristics. And I have an arrow coming over here to A51. That's the specification. It's crossed out, right? We're not talking specifications, we're talking classifications. So then we come down here to E6010. It's uh, 718's little brother because it only has a 60,000 pound minimal tensile strength. Again, one, all positions, and then the zero is again your flux and your electrical characteristics. er 70 s 6 might be one that people are using that they don't necessarily know they're using. Uh, very common MIG and TIG wire, and they're the same classification because the difference between a MIG and a TIG wire is just a MIG wire is in a, in a spool and a TIG wire is in a straight line, right? So it's the same. Electro rod, 70,000 pound minimal tensile strength. The S means it's a solid wire. And dash six, the six is your, um, your com composition of the wire. Now, we're coming down here to, to flux core. And flux core is just a little bit different here. It starts again with electrode. Seven means 70,000 pounds minimal tensile strength. This one means position. They get rid of the zero for uh, flux core wires. So this one means all position uh, wire again, and then the T that means it's tubular. Flux core wire has got flux in the middle, right? So it's going to have a, it's going to be tubular. It's not going to be solid like like your MIG wire here. And then dash eleven, and eleven is a little bit different. Uh, they call it usability is what they're calling this this dash number here. 
And what that means is you can have flux cord wires that don't require gas, or you can have flux cord wires that do require a gas, and that's what this number is telling you, whether it needs gas or not, and what gases you can use. They call it dual shield, so dual shield uh, flux cord wire. So these are common classifications. Come back down here, give you something else to look at here. Um, hopefully that clears up what the classification is. Like I said, welders that are actually out there welding, they usually have an idea of what the classification is, they just don't link it that it is the actual classification you know, of the wire. Uh, welding engineers, welding inspectors, they should know that the classification of welding wires or rods or whatever you're using is going to start with an E, a spec is going to be an A. So we're going to go out and look at the, um, the boxes of wires and rods that I, I pulled out we'll show you where on the box it shows you where the classification and the specification is. This is a uh, Lincoln Electric name brand 7018 and you can see right here it says 7018 that's your classification. Your specification is listed down here that's your AWS A5.1. They just left the E off of it on the box which isn't necessarily good but it's not bad either. What we'll do is we'll find another rod that has the E on it that's a stick rod we'll show you that real quick. This is actually more of a knockoff brand. And you can't miss this, right? E6010, there it is. So, got the E on that one. Now what we'll do is we'll look at a uh, TIG wire box, and then a MIG wire box. This is a tube of TIG wire. It's got the ER70S-6, and it actually has the spec listed right there as the spec. A lot of times they don't have that on there. Sometimes they don't have the ER on there too, it just says 70S-6, all it depends on the brand. So we'll check out a MIG spool, and we'll call it a day. And I found this kind of interesting, they have 70S-6 on the top of the wire, and they got the specification under that, A5.18, and then they have the classification listed at ER-70S-6. So why they left the ER up top, I have no idea. And on the box, they left off the ER as well. So they're just saying it's 70S-6, and if you need the class, we'll put it on the spool, I guess. So hopefully that clears up what a classification is. Like I said, it's not the worst thing in the world if you don't know what a classification is, but I mean, you should know it. But if you're a welding engineer or an inspector, you definitely need to know what the classification is. That's all we got for this week. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld, and we'll uh, we'll see you next week.